The key to forming strong brain architecture is what's known as serve and return interaction with adults. In this developmental game, new neural connections form in the brain as young children instinctively serve through babbling, facial expressions and gestures. And adults return the serve, responding in a very directed, meaningful way. It starts very early in life, when a baby coos and the adult interacts and directs the baby's attention to a face or hand. This interaction forms the foundation of brain architecture upon which all future development will be built. It helps create neural connections between all the different areas of the brain, building the emotional and cognitive skills children need in life. For example, here's how it works for literacy and language skills. When the baby sees an object, the adult says its name. This makes connections in the baby's brain between particular sounds and their corresponding objects. Later, adults show young children that those objects and sounds can also be represented by marks on a page. With continued support from adults, children then learn how to decipher writing and eventually to write themselves. Each stage builds on what came before. Ensuring that children have adult caregivers who consistently engage and serve in return interaction, beginning in infancy, builds a foundation in the brain for all the learning, behavior, and health that follow. Thermodynamics, all right, let's start. Thermodynamics is the science of the flow of heat. So thermo is heat, and dynamics is the motion of heat. Thermodynamics was developed uh, largely beginning in the 1800s, at the time of the Industrial Revolution. The taming of, the st of steel, the beginning of generating uh, power by burning fossil fuels. So anyway, thermodynamics dates from the same period as, 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 as getting fossil fuels out of the ground. It's universal. Turns out everything around us moves energy around in one way or the other. If you're a biological system, you're burning calories, burning ATP, you're creating heat, if you're a warm-blooded animal, you're, you need energy to move your arms around and move around. Mechanical systems, obviously cars, boats, etc. And even in astrophysics, when you talk about stars, black holes, etc., you're moving energy around, you're moving heat around, and you're changing matter through uh, thermodynamics. And the concepts of thermodynamics have even been applied to economics, systems out of equilibrium, like big companies like Enron, you know, completely out of equilibrium.
A wind turbine is a device that will convert wind into mechanical movement, which we can use to power a water pump or electricity generator. Now the power that a turbine creates is obviously dependent on the wind speed. It's also dependent obviously on the number of sails, the area of the sails, and the angle that the sails makes to the wind. So if you can imagine if the turbine blades are flat onto the wind, the wind is just going to sort of bend it. But if they're at a slight angle, when the wind hits it, it's going to turn the blades. And we can use that for powering things. Now we're going to have a go at making some very, very simple paper windmills, the sort of things that you can make from the bits and pieces lying around at home, and use that to drive a very small generator to power electronic devices. The U.S. birth rate has fallen to a record low, says a new Pew study, with the biggest decline felt among immigrant women hit hard by the recession. According to the report, the overall rate of births per 1,000 women ages 15 to 44 fell by 8% between 2007 and 2010. Currently, the numbers are some of the lowest since records began in 1920. Many cite the recession of 2008 as a main factor to why births for the U.S.-born Latinas, in particular, have dropped so rapidly, as Hispanics have had larger percentage declines in household wealth than white, black, or Asian households in recent years. Meanwhile, another change in the American household, more singles. Data now shows that fewer adults in the country are married, 51% compared to 72% in 1960 and that Americans, on average, are getting married at a later age than ever. And in related matters, the phenomenon of adult professionals living with roommates well into their 30s and 40s is becoming more and more common, and not just in New York City. What's behind these social changes, and what could they mean for the nation's future? The brain is basically built from the bottom up. First, the ba brain builds basic circuits that are responsible for basic skills, and, and then more complex circuits are built on top of those basic circuits as we develop more complex skills. Biologically, the brain is prepared to be shaped by experience. It's expecting um, the experiences that a young child has to literally influence the formation of its circuitry. It's built into our biology. The interaction between genetics and experience that shapes brain architecture is embedded in the reciprocal relationship, relationships that children have with the adults in their lives. And by that we mean um, what we refer to as the serve and return nature of children's interaction with their own adults. Development and the impact of experience on development is not a one-way street. It's a back-and-forth interaction. The brain is a highly integrated organ which has multiple sections that specialize in different um, uh, kind of processes. So we have parts of the brain that are involved more in cognitive function and other parts that are involved in processing of emotion and parts involved in seeing and hearing. 
So if a child is emotionally uh, kind of well put together and socially competent, that will affect more positive and productive learning. And if a child is preoccupied with fears or anxiety or is dealing with considerable stress, no matter how intellectually gifted that child might be, his or her learning is going to be impaired by that kind of emotional interference. Sea creatures are inspiring the latest devices that harness wave power. This one, called the oyster, sits on the ocean floor and opens and closes as waves pass over it. Cables attach it to generators on the shore. Since November 2009, it's been powering 9,000 homes in the Orkney Islands. Another device looks like a snake. The anaconda is made from a rubber tube filled with water that floats just below the surface. When a swell hits the front of it, the tube is squeezed. A bulge ripples down its length and powers a turbine in its tail. Prototypes are currently being tested, but the full-scale version will be 200 meters long. This system also looks like a snake, but this one is made of steel. It floats near the surface, where waves make its joints move, this drives hydraulic systems that power electrical generators. Like the Anaconda, it's still being tested. Results will prove if these devices are up to the job of supplying viable sources of green energy. I had been writing nonfiction for years, actually, and but secretly wanting to be a novelist. When I first started writing at the age of 30, it was with the intention of writing fiction. But I took a little detour um, for 10 or 12 years and wrote nonfiction, which I have absolutely no regret about at all. I think it was exactly the right thing for me to do. But there was that dream tucked away inside of me to do this. And I remember reading something that Eudora Welty wrote, who is, you know, the great novelist from Mississippi who had a big influence on me, actually. She said, no art ever came out of not risking your neck. And I think she's absolutely right about that. It felt that way to me at the time, and actually it feels that way to me every time I sit down to write something. Finally, in the early 90s, I took my deep breath, 
and started writing fiction. It felt risky to me at the time to do that. And one of the very first things that I wrote was what I thought was going to be the first chapter of a novel called The Secret Life of Bees. I wrote it in 1992, and it is actually essentially the first chapter of the novel as it is now. 